I was terrified. I didn't want him to come and drag me. I thought that if we were just sit with him, he would either apologize for what he did, or that nothing else would happen. Because he did tell me this. Sit with me, nothing is going to happen. Nothing is going to happen. This is what you can tell me. Nothing is going to happen. And I trust it. But I was also scared because of the first thing that has happened. The penetration by the finger that has happened. And I felt like, do I know this guy anymore? And if I do, if I don't do what he says, is he gonna do worse? So, okay, went back, sat with him. And this is when all hell broke loose. Because that's where he violently, both hands pulled down my pants, and he raped me. It was on me. There was nothing I could do. I felt like I was going to die. My brain was not processing because this is a man that I trusted at a line. He did that to me the first time. Hold on my pants. I was scared. I was so scared. Yet at the point of time, I couldn't fight back. And when I say he did it not once, this was the first penetration. He held on to me, flipped me over. And bear in mind this whole time, even at the first penetration, I said, what are you doing? Stop. I am not comfortable with this. This is painful. Stop. I was ignored. I was blatantly ignored. When I try to fight with him, when I try to tighten my muscles, my, my thigh muscles so that he cannot go in the first time round. He ignored me. He just kept saying, relax. I don't want to hurt you. You don't want to hurt me? Was that a threat? I understood that as a threat. Am I going to get killed? These were the thoughts that were running in my head. So let's go back to that. He flipped me over. Hold on to me. Only thing I thought at one time was, let me make it difficult for you. Lift my butt up, purposely dropped it down. Lift my butt up, purposely dropped it down. Each time saying, no, 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 stop it, no. Ignored it, did it anyway, second time. It's terrified, I'm scared beyond my wits. 
What can I do? I told him, I need to go to the toilet. Okay. He said later, I really need to go to the toilet. I plead, I begged for him to let me go. And then he said, okay, go. Finally. Went into the room, my room, that I shared with my friend. Took my genital wash. Because I wanted to wash myself. I've never felt so dirty in my life. Do you want to take a break? No, I'm okay. I can't stop the emotions, I can't stop the tears from falling. Because every time I tell this story, those memories come back. Those feelings of helplessness, of pain, comes back. But I understand, the truth has to be said. So I'm here, speaking about the truth. So there I was, holding the genital wash, I sat down on the bed. Sorry, sorry, Ilian, when you said you felt dirty, um, can you explain a little bit um, why you felt so dirty? Was his um, was his semen um, on you? Um, no, it's it's not it's not about that. It's just the fact that you were penetrated by something that you didn't allow, that you had no attachment to. That I have a stable relationship fourteen years with my partner. It's my sacred temple. It's my sacred temple. That I didn't allow you to enter. That you forced them. Did he ejaculate inside of you? No. Because I wasn't done yet. He wasn't done with me yet. And I didn't know it at that time. Which is why I'm going to move on to my third okay. story of me sitting on the bed, holding my genital wash, trying to process what has just happened. I was in shock. I was scared. What can I do? I wanted to take that genital wash. I want to bring it to the toilet. I want to wash myself because I already felt so dirty. But I was stopped because this was when he suddenly came in. He came into the room that was shared by me and my friend. And he asked me, what are you doing? I said, I need to wash myself. He said, nah, man. Immediately, very, very swiftly came in, grabbed both my legs, and dragged me to the corner of the bed where my friend slept. And then he forced himself On me, the third time. K 
can you imagine how that feels? You're trying to run away. You're trying to stop this man from stopping, stopping whatever he's doing. You said no multiple times. You said you're hurting me. Stop. This is painful. There was no consideration. He just used me like a toy. I told him, I pleaded with him, let me go. Stop. He didn't. He didn't. He was trying to take me as a gratifying toy. He didn't care what I had to say. He didn't care how I felt. I was scared beyond my wits. And the only thing is I couldn't fight back. I've tried multiple times to tell him to stop. My body couldn't fight back. It froze. The only thing that I, that I wish that my friend will come back and see all this save me from him. Because what else can I do? What else can I do? I tried fighting. I tried doing what I can. What can I do? Clearly, he was not going to take no for an answer. Clearly, he doesn't care. Do I even know what he's capable of? After a while, he finally stopped. I went to the toilet, cleaned myself thoroughly. But like I said, I felt like a smelly ass vagina that was used. And I'm gonna do this so that it's easier because it's very clear to me right now that my Asian mom can roughly understand what I'm saying and she doesn't like me to bring this to the public. This is also another risk that I'm taking when I share my story. Because Asian shame is real. Even though this was done onto me, when I told my mom about it, initially they were sympathetic, but they do not want me to pursue it any further. They want me to stop. We try to hide all those facts that this happened to me from relatives. So, tell me, how do you think I feel? Those watching this, tell me how I'm supposed to feel. A man that you trusted. just done this to you. Am I wrong? We're trusting that he wasn't going to try anything funny. Because he was worried about his mom. And then that's why I gave him a hug.
Am I wrong to trust? When he said nothing is going to happen. Probably he told me nothing is going to happen. What else can I see? Is this free? So on the third time, did he, um, I'm sorry, on the, on the third time, did he ejaculate in, in, inside of you? Honestly, third time? I don't know. I wasn't there anymore. After the end of the audio, I wasn't there anymore. I was disassociated. And everyone else is just far away. That's my answer. So, so when you when you left the bathroom, how, how did you get out of the house? Did your friend come back? Yes, she did. And what, what happened when she came back? What did you say to her? Oh, I didn't say anything, actually. I didn't say anything to her at all. But I just went back, sat on my computer. And after that, you know... Basically, just like a ghost. I sat in front of a computer and stared at it, an empty screen. Because I couldn't process what has just happened. I was in shock. So how did the, how did the police get involved? So it happened around 12, 1 a.m. In the in the morning or in the daytime? In the morning. So when the day comes, because everybody already went. My friend went to sleep. After a while, around 5 a.m., I went to sleep. And then Richie had to go leave to take his Japan visa for the next part of the tour. So that's when she sat down with me, asked me about the work. I told her, didn't manage to get anything done. We both anticipated he would try to kiss and flirt. So she asked me, did anything happen? I said, yeah. And she said, what happened? I told her, I don't know how to tell you. And then she started going up the scale. Did he kiss you? Yes. Did he touch you? Yes. Did he put his dick in you? I stay silent. And upon a time, the only thing that came out was my tears. And she knew. She knew something happened. So she brought me to Melbourne Sexual Health Clinic. To where? Melbourne Sexual Health Clinic. Do you need to see a doctor? I said, yes. That's when she brought me to Melbourne Sexual Health Clinic. Went there. Did my checks. Told the doctor. Was given pills to prevent pregnancy. And then after that, went to the women's hospital. And that's when I had to decide, do I want to bring it to the police? I didn't know when I was going to charge him then, but 
I did all my checks just in case. Did my read good? There was a Kaza officer there who was going to help me liaison to the police when I need. And when I finally decided, okay, you know what? I'm calling the cops. Police report was made. When the rape kit was done, the police report was made. So you give a statement to the police? I give a statement to the police. And what happened the after that? Statement. They arrested him? And then after that, I needed to decide whether or not I want to charge him. That was another decision that I had to make. So by then it was already night. That's why my friend had already arranged for us to be out of the house. Totally out of the house, away from him. To go stay at another person's place. So that I could at least have a safe space. So when I decided to charge, the next day, I went down to the police station and did a four to five hours interview session for my statement. And that's when most of the end of my statement they told me that they were going to grab him. Before that, he's tried to call us because we just disappeared. The police made me call him and confront him for what he had done. which was very, very, very traumatizing. Because now you have to confront the person who did that to you. And it's still so fresh. What did yeah. he say? What did he say when you confronted him? <sighs> he said that he was not proud of what he's done. In front of the police? That was on the phone. But the police, that phone call the police, was recorded. The police heard that? Yeah, the police reviewed the tape. There was a recorded tape that the police made me call him and was recorded. And he said, I wasn't proud of what I've done, but I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't consensual. Mm. And of course, I screamed on the phone, what do you mean it was consensual? I said, no, multiple times. I said no multiple times. And that's when he also said, why is your sight so echoey? Is someone listening to me? I said, no, there isn't. But yeah, of course, it's recorded. But that's when he already knew it was recorded because he said, Let's talk when you come back. We're not going to see any more here. Let's talk when you come back. Phone call ended. Police grabbed him, and I was still taking my statement, still in the police station. We don't know what he said to the police. 
We knew that he was grabbed. When he was grabbed, we came back to the apartment to pick up the rest of our stuff. And then I thought that he'll be held there in the station. That he won't be allowed to continue with his tour. But then I heard. He left the police station with the promoter. What happened in the police station? Ask the police. They're not going to tell me anything. I'm very much involved in the case. They won't tell me anything. Except for he lawyered up. That's what the police said? Yeah. Why? Why did he lawyer up? I don't know. They didn't tell you why? No. They said he lawyered up. And they had to let him go. I don't know. Ask the police. I very much want to call them and ask them. How? Why? How did this happen? That was confirmed in this video, right? He lawyered up. When did you get the news that they were not going to um, continue with the case? I got the news 19 January 2021. After both of you left Australia? Yes. I left about one or two weeks after the assault. He continued on with his team. Why did you stay back? I was doing counseling. I was trying to get all the things submitted for the case. I wanted to get the police all the things that they need before I leave. Because the prob probability of them going forward when I'm not there is tough. Because I'm not their citizen. They have no reason to care. Right. I stayed behind for counseling. To heal. Or to try to heal. Did you take the, the, the tablets that the doctor gave you for the. Yes. Um... I followed the 28 day course that I was given. How many days you had to take them for? 28. Were you scared that you were pregnant? I was. I was scared. So I just kept on with the routine. I stayed with the routine. Didn't deviate from it. What would you like to see happen? Justice, accountability, and the ability for him to stop doing that to any others. Because what he put me through is for life. As you can see, 2021, every time I remember the memories, I cry.
I get triggered. 